Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over a walkthrough of Impa. And if you guys do not know what Impa is or how to install it, I will link a video down below on how you can install Impa and NCS Expert. These are very powerful diagnostic encoding tools for your BMW. If you guys are new to this or anything like that, like I said, check the link down below. Also, before I get started, give this video a huge thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you guys are new. And please, guys, check out my Amazon affiliate link if you guys shop on Amazon as it helps out the channel at no cost to you. So getting started, you should probably already have Impa up and running on your computer or if you're just watching this to figure out what you can do with Impa. So first thing we're going to do is the car's in position two. If you have a BMW E46 E38 or E39, you need a cable with the K-line and the connector and the pins are bridged. And I will link a cable that works for all BMWs down below. So getting started, let's launch Impa. And then let's pick the car. So in this case, I'll be working on my 2002 BMW E46. So you can either press F2 or click E46. So we're going to click E46. And then first thing I'm going to go over with Impa is scanning the engine codes because that's very important when you have a BMW and a lot of your codes are going to pop up that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to find your engine. I happen to have the M54 with the MS43. Um, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to the DME that you have. That's just the version of the DME. More look at your engine. So if you have the M54, N52, so on and so on or S54 if you have an M3 or anything like that. But we're gonna start with clicking on the engine. And then this is just normal with Impa because stuff's been translated, stuff like that. Just press okay. And then once in here, we can now read the code. So we're gonna press F4 and this will show you, if this pops up, just click no. So we're gonna read the codes. So we're gonna press F1 to read the memory. And we read the error memory. As you can see, I have some errors in my car. And those are the errors. And you can go through, you can search it. These, this is the BMW code right here, really. So if you type in this or whatever on Google, or there are some, I'll try to link maybe a huge list of all the BMW codes if I can find one, but that's, this is the SAP system bank one and two. Yes, I'm still having SAP issues. I gotta figure that out. But if I want, I can go under F4 again, and I can clear it, F2 and my memory's been cleared. So that's cool, that's how you can read your engine codes, but you can also do some other things. So if we wanna go press F4, sorry, if we wanna press read status, we can see the health of our engine and other stuff. So if we wanna check our O2 sensors, which is Lambda probe, we can press F5, and we can see our O2 sensors before the cats and after the cats, and you can also see the heating of them. So that's that. We can also press F two for analog and we get some more information like battery voltage speed coolant water outlet temperature oil temp air temp coolant temp bunch of other good stuff that we would possibly want to know you can also check your vanos so many great things that you can check inside of impa and it's super easy you just got to play around with that i wouldn't really be too scared of impa unless you're activating something like here for example if you have a new dme program to your car and the car has a very solid crank but the car is just not turning over and you scan your car and you see you have an EWS error it's because the EWS system is impaired to that new DME and you can go through this and it will pair your e EWS to your new DME which is awesome we also have activate and you can activate like Vanos test LDP test and stuff like that very very useful now we're going to get out of this and we're gonna go back to check out some of the body controls that we can do besides just the engine. Again, if you're using an E46 or an E38 or E39, yes, you will be able to scan the engine without the pins, pins bridged. But as soon as you need to do any other function in the car, those pins need to be bridged. So for example, if you wanna check out the transmission, I can't check out the transmission, I have a manual transmission. But if you did have a transmission that you wanted to check out, you could. We also have chassis, we can go check out our ABS pump, make sure you pick the one that you have. If you don't know which one you have, just keep clicking it until one works because only one will work. I know I have an MK60. And then it's gonna say the same thing with the languages do not match. If this pops up, just press no. It's just a script in the background, keep trying to process, but it can't. We can see the manufacturing date, the part number for my specific um, pump, which is really good in case I need to buy another one. But the same thing we can do like we did on the engine we can read the codes that are on the pump so let's click f4 and then we can press f1 
and bam, the, these are the codes. And this is a code that I keep getting. I actually think I need a new ABS pump. It's an internal fault code that I'm getting with my ABS pump. So definitely need to check that out. But the other code that I'm getting doesn't matter. Well, it kind of does matter. It's because I don't have an RPA button to reset my tire pressure monitor sensors when they're using the wheel speed sensors. That is something I'm looking forward to doing too. And then we can go back. So that's how you can read your error memory on the pump. Oh, another thing I want to show on the pump real quick. You can actually use this to bleed your ABS pump and your brakes. So if we go under, once you're back in the pump, if you go, press no, if we go F6, bam, we can bleed all the calipers, which is really cool. I don't know how well it works in the E46. I know on the new cars, you absolutely need to use ISTA to bleed the brakes. I think on the E46, you only need to use IMPA or ISTA to bleed the brakes if you're getting a new ABS pump like I could potentially be doing because there'll be air stuck in the pump and you need to actuate it to get rid of it. Let's go back again. Let's see what else we can check out. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is, so we did the transmission, we did the chassis, you can do your tire pressure monitor sensors, um, your steering angle sensors, but the body is where you're going to have a lot of your modules. If you have airbag codes, you can check those out. Um, your engine immobilizer. I wanted to check out the air conditioning, so let's do that real quick because I think I don't know, my air conditioning seems good, but it doesn't seem to be that great. And these cars are very specific to the way they're charged. You can't really go to Walmart and buy one of those kits. You really need something that has the actual pressure for the car. But let's check if I have any errors. So we're going to go F4. We're going to press F1. Oh, no errors. Great. So we have no errors there. But we can also go under read status again. So if we click F4, uh, sorry, F5, and then we go analog we can see all this other great stuff. We can see the pressure sensor, we can see the heat exchange sensor, we can see the indoor inner temperature sensor, the solar sensor, which is cool, because yes, the BMW does have a solar sensor. Many of you guys do not know that, that the BMW has a solar sensor built into the dash that is used to calculate how the AC or the HVAC system works. So we also have the flap, so check this out. If I click on my footwell button, you can see the flap just opened because I just opened up the footwell. We also, if I turn the, the froster on, ventilation, it's cool so you can see to make sure all your stuff is actually working. And we can also see if your water pump's on, additional heater's on, water valve, it's all this great stuff you can make sure that is working and supposed to be on when you think it should be on. So after that, we can go under activate and there's some other tests that you can do. You can test the stepper motor, you can test the water valve, blower, there's all these cool things you can test. So let's get out of here. All right, so there's a couple more things I want to show before I close out this video. We can also check out in the body, you can check out your light switch, like any module that's in your car and you're having issues with, you can check it out your xenon lights, you can check out your mirrors, if you have a diesel, there's diesel things to check out, you can check out your central body controls, park distance control, rain sensor, there's just all so many great things in IMPA. You can check out your whole car, which is great if you're having any sort of issues. And it, IMPA is so cheap, all you need is like a $20 cable, like I said, I will link that below, and I have a video on how to install the software, and it's pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it, and hopefully this video um, helps you figure out where some things are and how to do it. Basically, they're all the same the way they work, it's just the different modules that you're going in. You also can check your navigation system, CD changer. I don't have any of this. I have an aftermarket radio, so I really can't check any of this out. But um, let's check one more thing out just to show you guys. Oh, I want to show you guys this. We can actually check out the seat. You guys will really like this. So if we click on the seat, so this is the driver's side seat. I can check from memory. So if I read it, press F1. No codes are in my seat, which are great. Check this out, if we go under activate, I can actually move the seat up and down in IMPA. So if I click seat forward, the seat's moving forward. And it does it in a certain interval, it doesn't go all the way back. So now let's figure out how we can move the seat back. Shift and F1, and the seat is now moving back. It's so cool, I wish I, I was sitting screen sharing so you guys can't see this, but it's really cool that I can, I can pick go to position one, I can have it, if I wanna incline the seat and really, why, why would you want to do this is to make sure everything's correctly working in the seat. So you can check all the seat. If you got new seats and you want to make sure you function, you can just row through it. Or if you're getting some sort of other weird specific error, IMPA might be able to help you figure out what's going on with moving these specific options. And we can also, the cool thing is we can read the store positions. We can change the passenger side. We can identify, let's see what happens when we identify it. Oh, that's really cool. So we even have the part number. 
the supplier. That's really cool that we have all this information. All through input can give it give us this information. Let's see if there's any other things I wanted to show you guys real quick. No, I think that was really it I wanted to show you. As you guys can see, they all kind of work the same. Like for example, when I click on PDC, if your car's equipped, basically for the most part, you're always gonna be able to scan the error memory of it. You're gonna be able to read the status of it. Depending on what it is, you can see different um, status of you and you're going to be able to activate things to test what's going on. So that's really cool. So that they're all kind of set up the same way. Some of this other stuff like um, print screen so you can take a screenshot of it. That's all it is to input. Input really isn't that difficult. People are scared of it and I don't know why. It's super simple to use. Same thing with NCS Expert. I'll be coming out with a video about a how to or a walkthrough of NCS Expert showing you guys how to code your car and you won't mess anything up. It's, it's, as long as you're careful and know what you're doing for the most part, you won't mess anything up. And if you do, it's pretty easy to revert and input won't really let you mess up your car. So with that being said, if you guys would like to buy the specific cable that I'm using in this video, it's a great cable. I suggest buying it. I will link it down below. If you guys have any questions about what you can and can't do with Impa or, or, or stuck or anything like that, comment down below. Also check out my video on how to install Impa and NCS Expert. It's a really easy, basically a one-step button tutorial to install it. So check that out in the description below and I'll try to link that in the card. That is all I have for this video. Guys, please consider subscribing. Like this video if you like what we're doing here and check out my Amazon affiliate link down below as it helps out the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.